When you wish to suggest that somebody is perhaps not the ideal choice... You rubbish them? The first stage is to express absolute support. Why? Because you don't want to go on record as saying somebody is no good. You must be seen to be their friend. <laughs> After all, it is necessary to get behind someone before you can stab them in the back. <laughs> we, we wanted to work on this movie, Expel, because uh, we were concerned that uh, Darwinism, which is a brilliant theory, just beyond words brilliant. And this is a theory which was a brilliant theory in the middle of the 19th century. Well, the issue is that Darwinism, which is a brilliant theory, but, and that's a brilliant proposition. Darwin was a brilliant guy. Now, any of us connect with the movie says that Darwin was a fool. He was obviously an extraordinary, well, unbelievable genius. They've gone way beyond genius. him. Into way, beyond, and, and way beyond him. After all, it is necessary to get behind someone before you can stab them in the back. Well, the issue is that Darwinism, which is a brilliant theory and a, a great, great relic of the age of imperialism in the 19th century, this is a theory which was a brilliant theory in the middle of the 19th century. It's the 21st century. Yeah, and the age of a theory has no bearing whatsoever on its veracity. Newton's theories are over 300 years old, yet they are as valid in macroscopic mechanics today as they were in Newton's time. Down to its very foundations. If the most they can come up with to go against us is that they, they didn't get told the name of the movie, we think we're on pretty solid ground. I mean, they should be able to come up with something a heck of a lot better. Those, uh, yes, in fact, we've been extremely satisfied with the uh, reaction, especially of those who are not on our side, with those on the other side, because the most they've been able really to come up with is that when you interviewed us, you didn't tell us the title of the movie. And uh, what, I say, what, what, I, what I say to them is, we are challenging your whole world view. We're challenging your whole academic uh, view of the universe. And the most you can come up with to, to uh, oppose us is that we didn't tell you the name of the movie. That, there's, there's, something, there's something very encouraging about that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Stein, we'll get to the science. But first, let's deal with the subject of academic honesty and why it's important in science. Scientists basically dedicate their lives to furthering the knowledge of mankind. Lying and dishonesty are actively destructive to this goal and are universally the quickest way to end an academic career. It's a zero-tolerance policy. One strike and you're out. Now let's compare this to the conduct of Stein. A producer for Rampart Films contacted P.Z. Myers, an evolutionary biologist, stating, We are currently in the production of a documentary film, Crossroads, the Intersection of Science and Religion. We are interested in asking you a number of questions about the disconnect slash controversy that exists in America between evolution, creationism, and the intelligent design movement. Myers later notes on his blog that, now we've got this new ID creationist movie, Expelled, coming out, and there's a press release with this claim. Unlike some other documentary films, Expelled doesn't just talk to people representing one side of the story. The film confronts scientists, like Richard Dawkins, author of The God Delusion, influential biologist and atheist blogger P.Z. Myers, and Eugenie Scott, head of the National Center for Science Education. The creators of Expelled crossed the globe over a two-year period, interviewing scores of scientists, doctors, philosophers, and public leaders. And Stein calls this mere haggling over the title. Bollocks. If you try this sort of thing in the peer-reviewed literature, they'd cut your balls off. No one would ever waste their time listening to you again. So, yeah, the very founding note of Stein's documentary was intellectual dishonesty. But Stein is right, this point does not deal with the academic quality or content of the film. It merely shows that those who produced this film were willing to be academically dishonest from the very first instant, and that their very first action in putting this documentary together was to violate the primary commandment of scientific investigation. Being honest matters. Now let's take a look at Stein's, um, science. Two long, long years traveling all over the United States, all over Europe, interviewing many, many, many people. Who Two years of traveling the world and talking to people, eh? Wow. Well, let's see how much you've learned, shall we? They've been thrown out of their academic jobs because they taught that there was a possibility of life coming from something other than Darwinist, Darwinism. Uh, what are you talking about, Steiny? Evolution doesn't say anything about the origin of life. It explains the diversity of life. Just like Newtonian mechanics explains how matter moves, not where it originated from. 
just like general relativity describes gravity, but does not explain the origin of gravity. In non-scientific terms, you can learn all sorts of things about music by listening to an orchestra, without actually knowing where or how any of the instruments were made. Uh, we thought that possibly random selection and uh, mutations didn't account for the universe. Uh, now Stein is just talking utter gibberish. Random selection? I think he means natural selection. But this is part of the theory of evolution. It has nothing to do with the origin of the universe. That would be the Big Bang Theory. And uh, mutations didn't account for the universe, didn't account for gravity. No, but then again Darwin had nothing to say on gravity. Newton was the first player on that one. Didn't account for why nobody had ever seen an individual species evolve. No one's ever seen an individual why species is God? evolve. No one has ever seen an individual species evolve. Wow, I wonder how much research Stein did on that. Merely type observed instances of speciation into Google and you get a web page with about 30 cases of speciation documented in about 100 articles in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. Two years of traveling the world and interviewing people, you say, Stein. You can only say Darwinian causes, uh, random mutation, natural selection, even gravity is supposed to be done by that. And I would say to these people, well, how did life begin? We don't know, but it had to be by Darwinian means. Uh, no. They would simply say, we do not have a comprehensive explanation for the origin of life. Only in Stein's paranoid fantasies would there be any mention of Darwin. So, well, how did gravity begin? We don't know, but it had to be by Darwinian means. Maybe in Stein's poor delusional mind they would, but in reality they would say, What are you talking about, Stein? Gravity has nothing to do with evolution, or Darwin. Why does it have to be that way? Why couldn't there have been an intelligent designer? Because, Stein, for it to be science, it has to constitute a growth in the knowledge of mankind. The supernatural, by definition, cannot be studied by naturalistic means. It is, by definition, an unknown. Proposing the supernatural as an explanation for anything is merely replacing one unknown, say for instance where did the universe come from, with another one, the supernatural. The supernatural is nothing more than an intellectually lazy patch used by the weak-minded to cover unknowns, such that they can create a comfortable delusion of knowledge for themselves. While this may be reassuring for creationists, it merely inhibits the growth of knowledge. Putting supernatural stickers on everything that is currently unexplained is merely a path to an intellectual dead end. This is why scientists do not pursue this intellectually pointless exercise. Okay, so let's summarize Stein's depth of knowledge on evolution. We were concerned that uh, Darwinism, which is a brilliant theory, just beyond words brilliant, and explains a great deal about microevolution within species, was being taught as the only scientific ex explanation for creation. Nope. Evolution explains the diversity of life, not the origin of life. For development of life, for development of, of for development from inorganic to organic matter. Nope. Evolution explains the diversity of life. Inorganic matter, that's carbon-free material, cannot by definition develop into organic, that's carbon-containing material for uh, explanation of every kind of science, even astronomy. Nope, the theory explains the diversity of life has nothing to say on astronomy. Even uh, physics. Nope, evolution explains the diversity of life, not physics. Even thermodynamics. Nope, the variation of allele frequencies in populations suffering environmental attrition has nothing to do with thermodynamics. So, in summary, Stein's education on evolution could be surpassed by anyone who takes five minutes to read the Wikipedia entry, or any other encyclopedia entry for that matter on the subject. But Darwinism explains so little. It doesn't explain how life began. It doesn't explain how gravity works to keep the planets in their orbit. It doesn't explain how thermodynamics work. It doesn't have, explain how physics or the laws of motion work. But I, I'm willing to agree, I could be wrong. I'm often wrong. I'm very mm. often wrong. Here's a heads up for your next documentary, Stein. The correct order to do things is to learn something about the subject before you make the documentary, not the other way around. April 18th, yes. and the movie is called It's called Expelled, Expelled No Intelligence Allowed. Expelled No Intelligence Allowed. <laughs> that says it all. Man, thank you so thank much. You.